The state-of-the-art method for fingerprinting digital cameras exploits the non-uniform output of an array of photodiodes due to the discrete construction of a positive and negative junction when excited by photons. This ultimately creates what is called photoresponse non-uniformity noise, or PRNU noise. It's been shown to be effective, but ignores knowledge of an image sensor's output under equilibrium states without excitation, commonly known as dark current. Previously, we've shown that this same technique, PRNU, has also ignored facts such as lens operating system and temperature effects when examined under a signal pattern noise model. PRNU does make up the bulk of what we extract when we look at an image filtering process and actually filter out all of the image content, as it were, in an image and actually create a fingerprint that can be correlated back to an image. We see that under an extended fingerprint model, uh, we have about 9% noise that we can correlate back to an image um, to match an image to a source camera. And of that, the PRNU makes up the bulk of that sample, 6.44% of that 8.7%. The lens, in our studies previously, was shown to be 2%, and dark current only about 0.2%. This 0.2% is what I wanted to focus on next, because when we were looking at it, we found that there was a temperature effect, which saw a site warming of a CCD uh, sensor itself. This same warming we saw with CMOS sensors and basically any camera that we took photos with. The literature, however, said that PRNU is supposed to be immune to temperature. Well, from our previous work, we know that PRNU is immune to temperature, but it's this extended fingerprint that has that dark current effect in there that is not. And we can see that it can actually increase the correlation between an image and a camera at high temperatures. So what is this dark current? We all know about a positive and a negative piece of silicon. Silicon that's been doped to either be positively charged or negatively charged. And as a result, it has an excess amount of holes, positive ions, or electrons. When we put these together, we get a depletion region, an intermixing of these charges. When in the dark, we get a diffusion current that is in there, which is this dark current. When we illuminate a photodiode, that depletion region shrinks, and we actually measure out the photo current. So in order to measure this diffusion dark current, we need to eliminate that source of light. But from a camera, that's what it's designed to do. So how do we do that? Well, we conducted an experiment where we could control for temperature, exposure, light, and amplifier settings using three Sony IMX219 system on a chip CMOS sensors. These image sensors have built-in low dark current by design, and through the use of correlated double sampling before and after the analog to digital converter, it actually reduces the amount of noise that's put into an image. Through the use of this custom design rig here, which is literally a cross of metal hooked up to a Peltier plate, we were able to control the temperature in five degree increments between 10 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. We controlled uh, exposure and light by taping over our image sensors, and we controlled all the amplifier settings by um, putting in a constant exposure time um, to balance our amplifier settings within our Python script. What we did is we took uh, 100 images at each interval, and we then ran it through the typical process of filtering and extracting a fingerprint, and then plotted the results once we correlated it back against a reference sample of the same temperature from the same camera. And this is what we got. The reference temperature for this uh, set was 30 degrees Celsius. And we noticed that we had a slight warming up to about that 30 degrees Celsius mark. And we went, hey, this, this looks pretty cool. What can we do with this? So using the theory that was in the literature, particularly in Holst, I used that dark current density model to then create this regression model for each of the cameras that we had. And I then overlaid it onto the data. And we saw that the theoretical dark current density model actually matched up nicely with the data that we had to that certain point. And then where it tapered off, it kind of stabilized. And that's what we call the correlation limit. And we use that to identify the temperature of the image at which the camera was taken at that point in time. We hypothesize that this can be used to verify metadata within an image when the temperature is saying one thing, but the weather pattern at that location is saying that the temperature should be something completely different. If there's any questions, here's my uh, contact details, and we'd like to make the following acknowledgements as well as my co-authors.
Hi, thanks for watching this video. This is about our short paper titled PRNU based verification of multi camera smartphones, which was done in collaboration with UTS and University of Auckland. So, um, basically, PRNU based source camera attribution is a method which can tell if a particular anonymous image has been taken by a particular camera. This is really useful for um, crime images, uh, which has been uh, shown here as an example. And these images can come from social media. So as we know, the number of crime images in social media are increasing. And in that case, it could be really nice to know if a particular anonymous image, which is crime in nature, uh, has been taken by a particular camera or not. And the Perinobis method is one of these methods. Uh, which can help us in this. The way Perino works is very simple. So each camera has a sensor, which we know as a camera sensor. And uh, the way the sensor has been built uh, in such a way that the sensor uh, always has a fingerprint. This is particularly, particularly a type of noise which is unique to a particular camera sensor, irrespective of the camera model. Uh, the way we find that fingerprint is also very simple. Uh, we just need to know a few images of this particular camera sensor, let's say 20 or 30 images. And from these images, we compute uh, what we call as noise from each of these images and then combine the noise. And then we get a fingerprint or we get a combined noise which we call as the Pierino noise, which is unique to a particular camera sensor irrespective of the camera model. And therefore it becomes a fingerprint. And uh, that we get and then store in a database. And in the latter stage, when we have an anonymous image, and the question we are going to answer is whether this particular image has been taken by this particular camera or not, then similarly we get a noise and then match match the noise with the fingerprint that we had computed before. And if there is a match, then we say that this anonymous image has been taken by this particular camera. Now, Perino based method is not a new method. It has been studied for years, um, mainly for single camera. But as we know, the number of multi cameras are increasing uh, nowadays. Um, all the tough uh, camera smartphone, mainly smartphone cameras, are now multi cameras. Um, and these multi cameras are being used for multiple purposes, mainly to increase the quality of the image that we are getting from the camera, mainly smartphone camera, either for optical image, optical zooming, bokeh effect, and so on. So um, the objective in this particular uh, work um was to find out whether piano based method works for this particular camera uh, which is uh, basically multi-camera and uh, if so then uh, what is the best way to find the fingerprint and do the matching and we found that there is no reason that piano based method will not work for multi-camera smartphones um and uh, also if uh, actually explore two different methods to do the Perino matching for multi-camera smartphones, these are listed here. One, the first one is known as multi-fingerprint approach, where uh, basically we compute a fingerprint from each of these uh, cameras in the multi-camera smartphones. So these are two different sensors when we're talking about two different cameras in the multi-camera thing. And then we have two different fingerprint, and then we store them in the database. And when there is an anonymous image, we get the noise, and then we match this noise with each of these fingerprint to find out uh, if you know this noise is matching at least one of them. And if so, then we uh, conclude that this uh, conclude that this anonymous image has been taken by this camera. The other one uh, uh, here, what we do is we get uh, uh, the fingerprint from each of these camera, but instead of storing Two different fingerprints we combine them and then we uh, store the combined fingerprint which we call as a mixed fingerprint and during the time of matching then we get the noise and then we do the correlation to find out if the noise is matching to the mixed fingerprint so these are two different approaches that we explored in this particular work 
we did experiment for multiple uh, multi camera smartphones and and this is still in the preliminary stage but uh, from the result that we have got so far it looks like for some cameras multi fingerprint approach works better for some other multi uh, mixed fingerprint approach works better but uh, there are also some cases where the PRNO based method is not working and a few of these cameras and we are still exploring what could be the reason. Yeah, so that's what this paper is all about. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, thanks for watching this video. This video is about our paper towards defect video detection using PRNU based method. This work was done in collaboration with uh, UTS and University of Auckland. So, um, defect video is not new to us. Uh, we know that uh, the number of defect videos are increasing every day, and we also acknowledge the danger that the defect video is bringing to our society. And this is one of these examples uh, where it has been shown how defect video can be really difficult to detect and how defect video can be used very uh, natural looking uh, you know, um, videos or fake videos. So uh, this is the uh, real actor in, uh, and this, this particular uh, you know, scene is from this movie, um, which is one of the movies in the Indian Jones series. And uh, the real actor is Harrison Ford. Uh, in this movie was, I think, back in 1981, if I remember it properly. Then using different videos, this actor has been replaced, um, you know, um, by Nicholas Case. And as you can see, for a, 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 you know, normal eye, where we don't know who, the, who was the original actor, um, it's really difficult to know if uh, Nicholas Case was not the actor in this particular movie. So uh, this is, a, a, this is an example where maybe the thread is not there or not visible, but just imagine these videos are pornography videos. So in that case, deepfake fake videos can be used to create pornography videos of anyone. The fake videos can also be used or and also being used to uh, you know create fake information, mainly in political uh, domain uh, and so on. So this is something research is ongoing. I'm not going to talk more about that. But then, uh, of course, the question here is how to find out if a particular video is a, a defect video or not. Uh, so that's uh, that's a particular question that people are currently working on a lot. And um, we also um, basically looked at this problem in this particular paper. And the way we wanted to find out if a particular video is a defect video is defect video or not is by dividing this uh, you know video into multiple parts so here we are showing two different parts and then finding out if all the parts belongs to a particular camera if uh, two different parts of these videos belong to two different cameras then we can assume that this video is tempered or detailed, right so by the way this is uh, particularly a frame of the video so this this was our thought then uh, to find out whether a particular part of the video belongs to a particular camera or not. Uh, we explored uh, whether we can use the Pierano based method. Uh, so the Pierano based method is a very popular method to find out if a particular image, which is anonymous image, has been taken by a particular camera or not. Here, Pierano is a noise of the camera sensor, and we have to find that noise. Um, to find that noise, what we need is certain images from this camera, maybe 10 or 20 images, and then we get the uh, noise uh, and then combine those noise, and that becomes the Pierano noise or estimated Pierano noise uh, because we are doing the estimation here. And it, it looks like this estimated Pierano noise is unique to this particular camera. That's how, or that's why we call that noise as a fingerprint. So this noise is particularly unique to this particular camera. So um, yeah, so after that, we get a noise um, similarly from an anonymous image, then match the fingerprint, which we computed uh, before with the uh, noise of the anonymous uh, noise of the anonymous image to find out if they match. And if there is a match, then we conclude that this anonymous image has been taken by this particular camera. Now this is a full image, and Pierino based method works really good. It, it, there's a different uh, research area where people have shown that Pierino based method is a really 
uh, reliable method for this kind of problem. And it has also been shown that the part of the image, uh, I mean, it can also be found out if part of the image also has been taken by this particular camera. So in that case, we simply divide this image and then see whether it's, it's you know, the noise from this uh, part of the image is uh, matching to part of the fingerprint, right? So um, based on that, uh, basically, hypothesis. We did uh, certain experiments. Again, it's in, in preliminary stage. So the experiment was a limited experiment with limited data set and in a control uh, environment, meaning that we created our uh, deep fake, you know, video data set. Um, but we acknowledge that uh, for this method to be really uh, successful, it should work for any uh, kind of reasonably any other videos which is available uh, on the web in the real world situations and that's exactly what we're working on and from our limited and controlled experiment it looks like the reno based method uh, shows the promise to find out if a video is uh,